you all it's official. Uh, Graceland is on the way. I told you guys I'm going to make Tampa the place to be no matter where you at. Um, I tried to go fund me route. I tried a couple of routes. I tried the investment thing. None of those things seemed to work. So I took my best advice that I give you guys and I went and got it with my absolute own. Do me one favor as you're watching this documentary. Uh, just cherish these moments, cherish this information, and cherish this time. One thing that you and I both know, every leader with solutions typically meets a similar fate. We never know when, uh, when all this will conclude. So like I said, just take heed to the information, share it to as many people as you can, and get ready to us. Um, Graceland is on the way. Partner complexes, educational hubs, educational systems, gun ranges, A to Z. Tampa, Florida is coming. Hey, what up, y'all? It's Derek Grace. Allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm a number one selling author, 29 years of age, full-time father, a homeschool instructor, app developer, amongst other things. I ain't gonna lie to you, I don't feel like trying to figure them all out, and that's not even important. What we're here to talk about is the creation of in-home banking, where it started from as a concept, the courses, the curriculums, the transition into the game, and what we're doing with the streets with in-home banking. Take a walk into my world. You, you, you know this visual A1. Before we get started, I gotta plug my big bro, uh, best in the city. He all, he all like, hey, when I do my photo shoots, he the one that always cut me, you feel me, so I can get my uh, my my Calvin Klein and shit on, you feel me? DMs jump every time I get a haircut by him, you know, DMs go crazy. That's that's what I try to do, how the DMs go crazy. <laughs> that's my nickname, DMs go crazy, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt, hey, but matter of fact, bro, drop drop the what's it, what's the IG? Uh, Steve eight one three. Hashtag the Steve Cut. Check out some of my work. It is what it is. Anything for little bro. Listen, if you, uh, fellas, I know a lot of y'all, this right tax season coming up, right? You need to be, you know you got to be on your best behavior and have the best imagery for your lady. You got to let my bro cut you so you can get a piece of them taxes. I just want a piece of them taxes just a little bit. Uh, really dig into the contest tools. The thing, you know, I'm not even gonna blame them because maybe I could have been more specific with the title. But anyway, a lot of people think I what I basically mean is just go take all your bread, take it out of banks, stick it under your mattress. I tell everybody, if you're gonna do that, then you might as well leave it in the bank and get you know get that little BS interest they're gonna give you. <clears throat> but for the most part, through the course, through the curriculums, and out of board game. We just assessing the entities that feed off of us on a daily basis, weekly basis, bi-weekly, whether it be insurance, banks, jobs, any financial institution, period. But basically what most people don't realize is that those entities are not a necessity. They only they only a necessity based off most people's traditionalism. And when I say traditionalism, that's because somebody taught them they was a necessity. But if you break it down, you know, uh, uh, factually or by like their actual purpose, we can literally replace them and do everything ourselves. So that's basically what I've been teaching people in home banking, is how to be their own banks, create their own loan systems, fund their own ideas, things of that nature. Uh, a lot of us are solely relying on a system that wasn't created for us in the first place. So that's why I think rather than outside banking, in home banking is an absolute necessity. Well look, to give a real life example, this year, with, with my investment group with in home banking, uh, let me see how to run it down so it makes sense real quick. All right, I got probably roughly like eight or nine people that's in the investment group. Collectively, they put in about eighty to a hundred thousand dollars this year. Uh, I took that hundred right. So this is how it worked. They stimulated my business economy by believing in me and investing a hundred grand. 
I then took that money and put it into advertising and marketing because you know marketing my thing. That's why I'm, I, I love. Oh, that's why I major at. We jumped back in 12 months. We made roughly like nine hundred and twelve thousand dollars off a hundred thousand dollars worth of investments. And then secondly, the way I stimulate their economy is everybody in my investment group gets a, a, a twenty to thirty percent ROI on their on their money monthly. Like most banks, not gonna give you over four percent on interest, but I do twenty and thirty per month just to show people like. If we had a collective identity, we wouldn't need a bank. We wouldn't need any of that. We get enough bread hand to hand in the streets to uh, to suffice. Like we really don't need outside entities to charge us interest, but it's an upside down business deal. So, as far as the culture, um, I mean, there it is right there. Like, just a prime example. If you got ten grand right now, I'm positively sure you could find two people who need five thousand. You stimulate their economy by loaning them the five thousand. You know, you drop the contract paperwork X Y Z. And then they're gonna they're gonna uh, they're gonna reciprocate the stimulation of your economy by way of paying you interest monthly on the money that you loan them. You remove the middleman. They don't gotta go beg a bank for help, and um, you don't have to do business or or pour money into insurance or 401ks to get interest. You could do all that at one table with your own people. This year I, I retired my mom in July. Uh, same with my pop. So we now business partners. We in home bank together. Uh, and I got like I got like three or four. I don't even want to call them employees, but I got three or four people that's you know under me in a sense that I uh, I stimulate their economies. They provide me a service, and I re I reciprocate it by you know paying them a wage that makes sure their family straight. And I'm gonna tell you something else too. When you controlling the board, which I know I'm big on, like jobs be giving people pay rates, but when you control the board and we are moving with integrity, you actually could look your partner in the face and ask him like. You know, granted he not being outrageous, but you could literally ask him what type of money he needs to, you know, be content or have a decent lifestyle. And you can meet him there. You know, that's not the goal of jobs. Jobs are going to tell you what they feel like you're worth. You're either going to accept it or you're going to be jobless. To be real, our people, ethnic people, are overly uh, in love with entertainment. To be honest, you're not going to really capture their, their minds unless it's some form of entertainment. And I, can, I mean, I can give you a gazillion examples. Like if you look at the, de the the attention to detail when it comes to the educators of this era, and you look at the following of an athlete, you'll you'll see it. Like they love entertainment, they love drama. So essentially, what I had to do was trick black people into helping themselves. If I'm gonna be real with you, uh, I put it in the form of a game because it got to be entertaining. It had to be colorful. It had to be lights. It had to be something to make them laugh. And everything I create is always family based. So. That was a must too. Uh, I mean, that was one of the biggest reasons for making it a board game. But I saw through example, like with just writing a plain curriculum and telling people to take a course, uh, the reception wasn't the same because people just, it's unfortunate, but we like, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I really don't have to go into it because the signs is in front of us. If you pay attention, you'll see it, but people are much more enthralled in entertainment. So basically what you have to do is you have to create edutainment. And edutainment is just entertainment and education intertwined. So. Uh, that was the whole goal of the board game is just to be real like in this line of work a lot of your people You're gonna have to you know, it's the medicine and the candy method You're gonna have to trick them into helping themselves Like I can pull out a book right now and be like bro This book got the keys to life in the fountain of youth And he and he may second guess it, but if I jump out, you know with a hundred thousand dollars cash and you know, uh, you know a, a, a Decent looking stripper and be like yeah, bro. I'm living the life. You should listen to me um not all of us, I'm not gonna generalize all of us, but many of us would then listen, you know, so it was all marketing <coughs> and it was also me just finding out a way to infiltrate the black home. This is why I tell people all the time, like it's not a game, it's the game. So I'm gonna give you an example. Most of my people don't know about trust funds. Most of my people going th going through divorces and losing <coughs> half of what they got, or they're not protected from the IRS, the government XYZ because they don't know how to you know, allocate their funds into a trust and make sure it's privately protected. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's one of the things I know. Uh, trade lines. A lot of my demographic and my peers went to school with a friend from another demographic who graduated to a Benz in a house. Meanwhile, we were just trying to figure out how to keep gas in the little 95 hoop that we had in the, in the year 2000. But what that stems from is that you have other demographics and nationalities they educated on credit, right? They, they'll attach their child to their credit line, run up, run up an 800, 
And by the time they son 18, 19, you know, he got the buying power to get anything in the world. Meanwhile, we grow up with phone bills in our names or no credit at all. Like, what I've learned too with the courses is that most people in my era, the millennial generation, and of, and of my ethnicity, the only thing they know about credit is just that they're supposed to pay it on time. Like, credit is a, is a, is a strategy-based uh, type of currency. It's not something you just leverage and you just use it and pay. No, it's, it's, it's a certain way to leverage it to make sure you win. So, I mean, from trust funds to credit to the disparity of, of crack, crack sentences, another thing my, a lot of my demographic don't know about, like, there's a huge disparity in cocaine sentencing and crack sentencing. So, basically, cocaine is more so uh, a drug for demographics that have more money than us. I mean, we're going to be real. Like, it's a white man's drug. It's a rich, a rich man's drug, powder cocaine. Crack cocaine is typically what makes it to our neighborhoods. But if you look at the sentencing of the two, uh, the, the, disparity, the disparity is damn near, I want to say it's like 80 times more, uh, more time that you'll get with crack cocaine and powder cocaine. So, man, it's, it's just a number of obstacles and traps that many of us are not even uh, aware of. So, like, that's why I tell everybody it's, it's more so the cheat codes. I just put it in the game format because I needed people to, you know, like I said, the, 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 the whole medicine and the candy method. You know, we gon' we, we made it look good, but you don't understand like once you actually crack it open and play it, you know, I'm 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 gonna force you to start moving on a different frequency. Alright, well look, the first thing people gotta know is that people of color, like alright, let me just give you this. If I only had a following of a thousand followers, it wouldn't mean nothing. But I influence the influencers, like the athletes and the entertainers that they, that a lot of people look up to are the same people who look to me for information. They're the same people that bought the board game. So what you'll, what you'll start to realize is that um, when you're able to like hold a post on the collective of people and get them to buy into what you're saying, other people who purposely withhold this information will put cert certain obstacles in the way to you know halt what you're doing. So I'm not even gonna use their name because you know we're not gonna get them no shine in this in this documentary, but X Y Z. Yeah, X Y Z. One of the biggest uh, board game companies, like worldwide. Period. Right. Damn. You know, if I give this example, you gonna know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So look. Just say X company. We had a conversation with a board game manufacturer. They had three three immediate concerns, and and this this, this was the, the catch twenty two. If I did business with them, they would expedite the process of the game, meaning like I, I could have been hands off. We could have literally had the game distributed distributed in one month and been done with it. But it, it, this was the three concerns. Number one, the, the, the title of my board game would have to have their name in it. So basically it would have to be like in-home banking, blank, blank, blank. Anything that they, they touch, their name has to be present on it. Number two, by contract, they're allowed to tell you how many units you can produce per year. So say my game had the demand of 10 million people, but they said, Derek, we're only doing 1,000 units of your game in the calendar of 2019. I would just have to sit still because I signed a deal with them. And then number three, uh, one of the biggest concerns was me softening the information in the game. And that's the point I make when I say like it's the game and not a game is that most games are like great pastime, family fun, XYZ. But it's not a lot of games, if any, that's going to teach you how to practice group economics. That's going to teach you, like, people know the term generational wealth, but they still ain't figured out how to create it or transfer it. It got that type of information in it. Like, I'm going to give you another example of something that's in there, right? Um, a lot of us have grandmothers and grandfathers who are old and elderly right now. So this, this is a tool you could use. Now, to get them a life insurance policy would be really expensive because of their age. But this is how you literally can catch generational wealth in five years. Now, not banking on anybody, grandma or granddad dying, but I'm just giving you a real example. Your grandma 95 years old, you know she leaving soon. You take 10 of her grandchildren, y'all pouring $100 a month and get her a million dollar policy. Cause it's gonna cost you a lot cause she's so old. When grandma leave, you take a million dollars and you split it amongst those 10 grandchildren. How many of us died and had a grandma that left 100 G's a piece to each child? I didn't, I don't got no homeboys or nobody that did. So this is literally stuff that you could pull off like right now. 
again, not speaking nobody grandma dying soon, but this is something like if you know that time may be coming, <laughs> it's like literally, literally tools we could use right now to transfer generational wealth within the next five years. So, as far as the release, now it was a lot of obstacles from 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 copywriting and trademarks to other companies stepping in to you know to to, to 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 those miscellaneous emails and DMs you get regarding the information that you're putting out. Like, and and, and I, I think one of the biggest parts that people miss is. Um, I be thirty. I be. I be. Uh, I be thirty in August. Most twenty or thirty year olds that run into their first liquid million dollars is not going to take it and pour it back into the streets. And I'm not knocking nobody if they don't. But the point I'm making is, we trying to build. Not trying. We on the midst of building schools, educational hubs, apartment complexes, gun ranges, with the tools that we put out into the universe. So essentially, me putting the in-home banking board game out and the funding from that. Is gonna open up the doors for quite a few things. Uh, I'm mean, even speaking on that. We we closing on a um, uh, an educational hub next week actually, that we're gonna be opening in February. So, I mean, as far as the obstacles, man, it was plenty. Cause I'm gonna tell you, like most missions get stifled by a lack of capital. You know, not saying it from a braggadocious place, but I got a lot of capital. So the issue now you're gonna run into is, okay, let me rewind real quick. Black leadership go through a, a, a couple different uh, uh, levels, right? One level is they're going to diminish your character. Another level is they're going to attack you legally. Another level is uh, they're going to attack you physically. And then the other level is like, you know, as far as paperwork and things, things of that nature, that's how they come at you. If you, if you go back uh, in history at any leader, you'll see like it's typically four to five different ways they approach them before, you know, they just all out physically approach them and try to, erase them so no it's plenty of obstacles and like I said like with my following things of that nature uh we got enough behind us to rival like big companies and you know that's gonna come with you know I don't know it may come with the territory I ain't tripping but no it was plenty of obstacles I told people all 2018 like I literally told them save this video because I knew they would they would come back and we had this conversation but man, even outside of the food stamps, like the market is, is set for a crash. So what a lot of people not even taking account of is that the cost of living is about to get crazy. The national interest rate has already been approved to raise by the government and the feds. Uh, but, and speaking of the food stamps, I actually saw it yesterday. It was, I think it was. You seen minimum wage went up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $8.50. Right, come uh -huh. on. Yeah. <laughs> so look, it's crazy. But look, bro, that's all the more reason why like I'm trying to I'm trying to just get everybody on a type of time of either getting their own or finding multiple streams of income. But no nah, man, I, I seen a post yesterday regarding the food stamps that said I think it was Andy. They was like they can't accept food stamps no more because of the government shutdown. So no nah, man, to answer your question, like it go hand in hand with you know do for self or like I said create multiple streams of income like. I'm not anti-job at all, but I tell people all the time, like, the American dream is a facade. The, the American dream wasn't created for the one-income worker. And if you don't believe it, just look at most people with uh, one income and see how they live. And it'll clearly show you, like, the game not set up for the people who only got one income. Like, I, I quote, um, what's his name? Dick Gregory all the time, right? He gave this example. A mother on welfare wick has a limitation on how much apple juice she could buy. But a man can take a prostitute all around the world, label her as his secretary on paperwork, and he get a tax write off. That itself shows you that, like, that goody two shoe self righteous play about the book shit is for the birds. Like, if, if you're not gonna find a way to get the codes that they got to the game or outwit the game, then, you know, you, 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 you're gonna be lost in the sauce to the day you leave here. Like, that's something I see too. People be so, like, self righteous and, and perfect and shit that. They don't recognize, this is my true belief, like the rule book was made for the poor and the lazy. Cause the motherfuckers who wrote the rule book wrote another book that's like three stairs up for themselves. Like nobody with bread follow none of that shit that they tell poor people to follow. So, no man, it's like, like I said, what you gotta do for self. That's the biggest thing. Watch the news, I don't watch shit with Trump. I don't know what the fuck he be having going on. I just see shit on IG every now and then and laugh and keep scrolling. <laughs> my, my kids don't know who Trump is. Hey, y'all, so basically, um, 
we taking a quick mini tour uh, through the city to some of the uh, some of the properties I want to acquire. For those of you who don't know, I mean I've been talking about it for a little over two years, but um, of course y'all know. I know you know this. Uh, we're looking to open the Unlearn and Relearn Academy this year in Tampa, Florida. Uh, outside of that, I want to. Um, I've been looking for large unit apartment complexes. I got an idea in mind about uh, creating an educational hub. Basically, we would bring families in low income. You know, they have to pay very little to stay there, but there would be stipulation, stipulations uh, to stay there. So, you know, some of the stipulations would be they have to attend mandatory classes on the weekends. They would have certain workshops they got to attend. They would have certain things that they got to maintain within their personal lives and the household to keep their residence. Because basically, um, it'd be like a 24 month cycle, but the whole goal is you come low income, but your ass don't leave here low income. Due to those mandatory workshops and classes and information that we're going to give you, uh, you essentially have the tools to go out and conquer the world following uh, your departure from this low-income housing. So basically, man, like in a nutshell, just an educational hub um, and, and, and sleeping grounds, if that's an you know, easier way to put it. But uh, outside of that, I've been telling you guys also that I've been working on a, a creative space. I know a lot of creators, I know a lot of entrepreneurs, I know a lot of innovators, a lot of people with amazing ideas and concepts, but they have nowhere to hone in on their talents. So um, today, you guys are going to see us do a walkthrough uh, of one of the buildings that we're, uh, the second building we're about to acquire. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I set a goal with myself. I want one to two properties every month of 2019. Uh, I closed on one maybe like three, four days ago. And today, you guys gonna get to see the sneak peek. I'm, like, listen, the building is in shambles. It's a little beat down, but y'all gonna get to see it from the starting point of what we about to do with it and what we're gonna do with this creative hub to where like, you know, the thinkers, the innovators, the leaders, the people who have amazing concepts of this millennial era and this generation, they'll be able to hone in on their talents and they'll be able to utilize me in a private location at any time they need to to get whatever information, whatever game, whatever insight they need. So y'all just, you know, Keep it right here, and we're gonna show you a couple of these properties that we plan on taking over and making a part of Graceland. Hey, what up, y'all? So we got the famous grounds. Uh, if you pay attention to my IG, you saw this video before. The current school we at. Uh, this is the location I'm seeking to buy. Like I said, whether it be this one or whether it be another one, it's the Unlearn and Relearn Academy is going to happen in Tampa, Florida, 2019. Um, but like I said, speaking of the video that I posted. If you saw it, more so back then, I was looking for support from other people to team up. But you guys know a lot of times support is just verbal when it's time to actually move. A lot of people don't move, but we're not here to harp about who didn't. We're here to talk about what we're going to do. So like I was saying, y'all, with the Unlearn and Relearn Academy, uh, this is the building that I'm seeking to grab right here in Tampa, Florida. And I told you, man, some, some of the big things that's going to separate this academy is, number one, we're going to have a revolving door for teachers meaning the teachers are gonna be graded uh, by their peers and the students. So basically, I know a lot of you guys, you hated Ms. Jones first grade, and you had to deal with Ms. Jones all the way to fourth grade because that's just the way your school system was set up. We'll have a revolving door so you won't be forced and confined to continuously be taught and build with somebody that you necessarily may not appreciate. Uh, from the in-home baking classes to the parenting classes, uh, the tactical training classes, the gun classes, uh, business, I mean, I can go on and on, but uh, it will be a curriculum based academy. It will be a custom curriculum based academy um, And another big thing that I know people are gonna appreciate. I want to have child talk classes uh, A lot of times children receive the information a lot better from their peers So that's something else I want to put in place But like I said, it's a number of things again because this question has been asked a gazillion times It is a family academy the entire family is welcome I'm gonna tell you guys right now the daytime will more so be geared towards the youngins Evening and afternoon will be geared towards the older people and the youngins as a family. But uh, like I say, man, Unlearn and Relearn Academy 2019 is on the way. If I don't get this building, I'm going to get another one. But rest assured, if I said it, I'm going to make it happen. Well, in home bacon, like honestly, I can't even lie, man. At first, I was a little skeptical about it. You know what I'm saying? I was skeptical about it because my dog. My home, but he was telling me about it. But at first, how he was explaining it didn't really make sense. So when I got with Derek and he kind of broke it down to me, you know, and went more in depth in, uh, in depth with it, it kind of like sparked me. You feel me? So I'm like, I wanted to do it like uh, math, the numbers in my head, with, you know what I'm saying, with stuff. So I ended up on, um, I was on like my last little, I want to say two, like my last 2500 2500 invested with him. 
Boom. He say, hey, bro, come. He say, um, bro, come see me about what? About six months. What it was, D? About six months. It was about six months. Honestly, I can't even remember, but I know when I came back, it was there. You feel me? So from that point, from that point on, hey man, that man changed my life. I can't even lie. You feel me? Because it gave me more time to spend with my kids. I was able to walk away from a a, a, not a dead end, a dead end job, dog, like slaving me. You feel me? I'm talking about ten hours, shit. Sometimes 15 hours. You feel me? Able to walk away from that, walk away from that job, invest into my business, kick it off, and they, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And it took me a while to bounce back. You feel me? By me investing in what Derek had, you know, had going, not not really knowing too much information about it. But when he broke it down to me and, I, and we built that trust, you feel me? I'm able to ride off of that, and they. Man, it just changed my life, honestly, dog. I can't even, it, it did a lot for me, and it's continued, it's, it continued to do a lot for me right now, you feel me? Because everything, what I've been through before, you know, this shit was like a miracle. Like, it was, man, I invested with this man. I'm up, I ain't going to say what I'm up right now, you know what I'm saying? Because you ain't supposed to do that. But I'm up right now, and it's unbelievable, kid. Like, honest, honest to God, it's unbelievable. I'm up right now. Um, big plans for this year. I'm able to buy, like I said, I'm, I'm able to buy the things that I never had, even though it's even though it'll be foolish, you know what I'm saying? To to to, to uh to buy the things that I have in my mind, <laughs> I ain't gonna do it. It'll be foolish, but just being able to have the funds right now, you know what I'm saying? Knowing you can go do that, but why do that when you can invest that money into something that's gonna triple? You feel me? Quadruple. You feel me? And I know by me making the money that I'm making, what I'm doing right now, and bringing that back to Derek, putting it back into him, I mean, we gon' it, it ain't no losing. That's all I'm saying. And I never had this in my life, like, ever. I never, ain't no nigga came to me and, and, and put me up on game like this. You feel me? If I would've had this dude in my life, shit, if I would've had this dude in my life, shit, 2011, man, listen, it would've been a wrap, kid. It would have been a wrap, like, I mean, but, hey, all I'm going to say right now, dog, like, the future, you feel me? This, this man right here, the future, he the future for our kids, he the future for our, for our families, dog, every, like, he, he bringing that unity back, he bringing that, I'm seeing niggas, like, I got homeboys, I ain't seen shit in a couple years, but a recent meeting, uh, Derek just had. I see, I see one of my dogs. I'm like, damn, I see you moving here. Like, shit, you know where I got to move. He said, you know, I got to make moves. Man, that just showed me that the unity, though, like what this man is doing right now. He a major factor right now in our city, kid. He a major factor. But by y'all having that mentality of the crabs in the bucket, y'all going to miss out on this shit. Y'all going to miss out. Uh... I'm gonna tell you this, he's one of the longest lasting entrepreneurs I know too, cause my boy been out here rocking for a long, long time. But I'm gonna kick it you, bro. You share with him what you do. You know what I'm saying? We've been around, you know, a little minute, you know what I'm saying? Really designed it off my grandma's name, you know, keeping her name alive, you know. That's who we, you know, we pray to, our ancestors, you know what I'm saying? They're keeping us afloat. Yeah, yeah. They are guarding angels and everything, but it's like a family business. We've been around a little, ever since I was like 18 on 27. Turned 27 January 10th, and I just been kicking it, man. I started off okay, on the back of my truck. Later, bro. Thank you, bro. Have the I started off on the back of my truck, just in the hood, just watching my homie cars, 10 bucks for a car wash inside or not, and just kept it going. You know, found a couple spots, been bounced around, but really got stationed well right here. You know, over here by Charlie's Market off Slime Roulette, and end up getting my dealer's license and yeah. just keeping it moving, man. Just adding to the plan, adding to the plan. Yeah. You know, just keep staying afloat. We here. Come check us out, man. Appreciate you, Sam, bro. Appreciate you. Hey, listen, he a hell of a pops, too. Outside of just business, he do his thing in that daddy field. So, you know, I had to plug that, too. You know, I'm big on that daddy shit. You know, you know, you know, that's what motivate us, man. You know, that's what motivate us, man. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. No, Stop in, man. You. Take Always, care, bro. man. Yeah, you too. Hey, my name is John Green, and I'm here to talk about the in-home banking. It's about Derek, Derek Grace. Um, 
how I came to get into this in-home banking thing, not having a clue about it. Um, I met Derek one day through someone else, and it just so happened that, you know, the guy was talking about him, and he was telling me about this guy named Derek Gray. So one day um, I picked the guy up, and he was like, hey, let's go meet Derek Grace, or I can hook y'all up and y'all can sit down and talk because he's all about, you know, helping helping people, helping the youth and all of that. So I was like, cool. So um, we came over to his house. We sat down. We kicked it a little bit. I told him what I did in terms of my my, my business and all of that. And, you know, he was like, uh, well, I need somebody to ride me around. So I was like, all right, cool. But I just like blew him off for like a couple of months, but he kept calling and calling and calling. So one day we finally hooked up and, you know, I started driving him around, driving him around. So uh, he made me an offer and the offer was, you know, um, how about you doing this in-home banking thing? And I said, well, what is it? So he explained it to me and what it was about. And uh, I thought about it for a minute and then I said, you know, that's a good idea, not thinking on the whole, on the bigger concept of what in-home banking banking is. Now that I've been with them for over a year, I sort of like understand, and it's a good thing for me anyway. I can't speak for anybody else but for myself. What, what in-home banking has done for me through their grace is that he's given me the opportunity to grow with the extra cash that I have in areas that I wouldn't have never thought about. Today I own three houses, and with my three houses, that extra cash can help me pay on my homes. It also can even, I even can bank it to even uh, purchase another house if I just sit on the money. That's, that's part of in-home banking. But my whole thing about the in-home banking is, is to support the boss, which is their grace. Why, why do I want to put all my energy behind their grace? One, because I understand the concept of collective economics. And also, I understand the concept of taking one person with the greatest idea and putting all the energy behind him so that everybody else behind him will grow as long as he's winning. We his backbone. That's what I think. That's what I think about in-home banking. It can't get any better than that than to let him flourish, do what he have to do. We don't have a lot of chiefs, and he don't has a lot of he don't have a lot of chiefs in in, in his camp. We all try to support him 100%. We want to see him grow. We want to see him move so that we can be successful. Also, it's a benefit to the whole crew. Not only that, by him succeeding and going as far as he want to go. Everybody behind him come up right behind, right behind their grace. So it has been a great blessing for me to do the in-home in -home banking. Not only that, I get a chance to keep money in, in, in my pocket as well. So in-home banking is one of the best things that you can ever do. Coming from the streets, moving to my own business, moving to having houses, and looking to do even greater things with the in-home banking concept along with their grace. I, totally and fully support him 100%. I was gonna mention the world when I posted that you was coming. Man, listen, that motherfucker said a shot. <laughs> you know what I'm realizing, bro? Well, I already knew this. We visual people. Mm -hmm. Once the prototype is done, them sales gonna quadruple. I just said that last night. I and just they, told Khadija that last night. Right or not, I'm already at a place of like moving like 50 to 70 know it's gonna be one of them days I like see it. honey going yeah 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 I know it <laughs> I told her I just said that bro I was gonna wait to bring y'all I was like well I was actually gonna come out cause I gotta go to somewhere St. Louis Friday then I got LA next week I'm like I'm gonna wait till this sound like nah me and Nadi gotta get it in right now hey, this, hey listen this is real everybody think this is a joke this is no joke <laughs> we lying we flying but no listen Derek has been changing lives for years. But right now, 2019 is his year to really show y'all in the world, you know, that it's serious. And if you don't get on now, I don't know what to tell you about 2020, because 2020 gonna be a big year. Oh, I'm sorry.
my investment. But anyways, look, 2020 is going to be a big year. 2019 is going to prepare y'all for 2020. So whatever y'all want to do right now, you better get it started. You better holler at your man. You know, you, you know DerekGrace2.com. Holler at him. He got plenty of social medias and, and outlets for you to find him. And you need to do that. If you don't, you're going to kick yourself in the foot. Don't kick yourself in the foot. Don't be butt hurt when you see everybody shining and grinding. No script. And you on the and you on the back end. You know how I kick it. It's real. This ain't no. I ain't reading that. Ain't no cue cards. This is for real. You need to get. You need to get with the process. Trust the process. I started a little late. Jumped on a train. Ben knew about it. Was kind of iffy. When I got on, I jumped up. It's actual factual. Twenty thirty. But that's in a little proportion of a year, like less than a quarter of a year. It's, it's out there. Opportunity is out there. Hey, bro, you wanna you wanna you wanna end on bank with me? It's easy as this. Look, I got some money. I wanna invest in your company. All right. I just wanna return. I don't want all of it back at one time. I just wanna return. And then vice versa. We gonna we gonna keep doing this. Do you wanna do that? No. Why not? That's as simple as. Why not? That's as simple as. That's is what. I want, I want that's what money. we're doing. That's what we doing. If y'all know me, y'all know I want me some money. Real, yeah, this real blue cheese. Think about it. Think about it. As a matter of fact, no, 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 no. Don't think about it. Just do what you gotta do. If you gotta crawl, walk, skip, hop, fly, yeah. whatever you gotta do. No minimum. No. No minimum. No maximum. No minimum. No maximum. Y'all know where to find him at. Okay, number one, I think Tampa is an amazing place, especially for families. I think the balance is here of righteousness, ratchetness, consciousness, all that good stuff. It's a great balance. A lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of money in the city. But um, we don't really have somewhere like a directory for us, for our culture or like a piece of this land or a piece of this culture that we could really feel like is ours, that we feel, that we, we just don't have that at home type of vibe here at Tampa. I mean, here in Tampa. So, basically, man, I'm launching a project, Buy Back Tampa. And the goal of that is to essentially, of course, get funds if you plan on buying something back. But not even long term, man, just within the next 12 months, I want this, uh, this Unlearn and Relearn Academy open. I want this four store front plaza, uh, which will include the nail shop for the organic nail shop for Derrica, uh, slash hair store. I want a retail spot for my books, my curriculums, things of that nature. The biggest, I think, of the four, though, is I want a creative space for innovators and creatives. And I think not even just in our city, but nationwide. What I mean, shit, worldwide, some of the places I've been out of the country, they don't have, like, an incubator where creatives can go, where they're welcome to exercise their most wildest ideas, their dreams. And then also have somebody like myself who... who who runs the establishment, who, who, who can assist them in building as well. Like, basically, it's it's one thing to have a... Okay, it's one thing to build a basketball gym. But if you was able to get LeBron to, to house his basketball training out of the same establishment, then, you know, that's a win-win for anybody that attends. Not only can they hone in on their skills, but shit, you got one of the baddest motherfuckers that would touch a basketball who could give you game as well while you're there, so... I want to do something like that for creatives, thinkers, entrepreneurs, innovators. All right, y'all, come on, take a walk with me. So, uh, I told you guys the goals for 2019 was to acquire one to two properties per month. Uh, a couple days ago, we did we did go ahead and uh, lock in, you know, deed work, all that good stuff on the property regarding the building that I was telling you guys about. We're going to start doing this year. Property number two, location number two, we're currently in it. Uh, y'all come with me. We got, you know, we got quite a few renovations to do. We got some work to do, but nevertheless, this is it. That creative space that I've been telling you guys about for the past year. Uh, for the creators, the entrepreneurs, the innovators, the people that want to hone in on their talents and their skills. You have nowhere to go. You got somewhere to go now. Uh, we're going to turn this shit into Grace Conda, in other words. So, like I said, uh, January 12th, we got two properties down for this month. Listen, I told y'all, and I, I'm going to keep my word. I'm going to bring it home. Uh, if you're not in my city, don't stress, but I'm going to make this city a safe haven for education, protection, self-knowledge, self-love, all those good things. So you guys get to see it beforehand. When I bring you back again, uh, just be ready. And if you're in the city, definitely be ready. We're going to make some amazing things happening at this location. 
Uh, I mean, I mean, well, that's why I lead them to it. Uh, thanks to Darby, I got these uh, community organizer events coming up. So that's why things like the turkey drive I'm doing on the 19th is so important. The the the, the coat drive, the toy drive, the haircuts and hairdos the next month is so important because. That's me taking the initiative to try to create that camaraderie and that synergy in the city. And you're right though. Most people that run into me here don't know I live here. They think I'm passing through them on vacation, whatever the case is. So no, 100 percent But that's why I'm taking the initiative the initiative on that end to even create the energy so people know like it's actually somebody here. And they actually give a damn. They doing things, you know, they they expand expending their resources, their time, their energy, you know, to bring some form of camaraderie in the city. But no, man, and even the low-income housing. I think that apartment complex would serve as a great hub for that because everybody going to be on a similar type of time. Everybody came in here with the mindset that, hey, the goal is not for this man to let me live here five years. The goal is for me to get my shit together within these 18 months so I don't have to be low-income anymore. And in the name of Jesus, that's God's name, not Father. Father is not a name. It is a title. Hey, y'all, uh, I know a lot of y'all are big movie buffs, right? We had a movie back in like 91, 92 called New Jack City. I know a lot of y'all are familiar with Nino, y'all familiar with the Carter. Uh, I, bring that, I bring that up to make an analogy, right? Imagine the Carter being heavily armed still, being of the people from the culture, but instead of giving them dope, we giving them actual food. We provide them with actual services, actual information and workshops that helped them to come out of the Carter to be, you feel me, to go build their own fucking Carter. That's the whole goal of what I'm trying to do with this low income uh, apartment complex. So, like I said, man, it's all about Project Buyback Tampa. Y'all stay tuned. I'm hunting, we in the works, and we definitely gonna make it happen in 2019. With Project Buyback Tampa, essentially what we're what we talking about is things like this, right? Uh, and you know what I'm saying? City to city, ghetto to ghetto. Uh, we get these apartment complex called projects, right? Low income housing. They, you know, they claim to be looking out for us, giving us away X, Y, Z. But essentially what's taking place city to city is gentrification. And I know y'all know all about this because y'all going through the same thing in y'all city. But what I'm trying to do with Project Buy Buyback Tampa is that, you know, we're going to grind, we're going to hustle, we're going to do what we got to do. But we're going to come to the table with our own bag, not being solely reliant on outside entities to show us the way. Essentially, when I was speaking of the apartment complex, this would be ideal, right? So basically I would come through, totally purchase something like this with 100 to 150 units, right? We bring those families in on a weekend basis and they have to attend mandatory workshops and classes during the weekends, eventually so they can no longer be, uh, no longer be low income. The whole point is for, the, for me to bring you in, rehabilitate your mind, your finances, your economic situation and put you in a better position. The issue that takes place with a lot of these is they don't teach these people shit, they don't give them shit, they don't do anything. So essentially you have people living here for 10 years, they got comfortable with this system. One day they get a letter saying you gotta get the hell out and now they're displaced in a whole nother area in the city. So basically you go from one project to another, your mind hasn't changed, your finances haven't changed, nothing's changed, you're in an identical position. Uh, to me, honestly, that sounds like you're buying time. You literally took nothing from that situation. So that's one of the big reasons why Project Buyback Tampa has to happen. I want to grab those same people, but you can't hang with me for five years not doing shit and being the same person. You're going to have to grow. You're going to have to move. You're going to have to break out of that shell. You're going to have to open your mind up to new things. And you're going to have to get your ass out of that out of that apartment complex and no longer be low income as well. It'll probably be like a square. No, but he wants nine, though. He needs nine. Yeah. But that means the board will be Less this big, gonna, though. Yeah. You, can't, you, you can only get so... Whatever this standard size, size is the this is this kind of pretty like, much the standard yeah, size because that's the standard box. The box. Yeah. Exactly. I mean. But see, this is how they fold up nowadays. Yeah, and four. That's that's a good way. All right, let me get my paper. They have to oh, say man. whoever gets seven got to say at least two yeah, people. But then that's gonna go bankrupt. But what if it's only two people? It's only two people playing. Then you have to. It's a contingency. Like you have a rule. Like mm -hmm. if it's two people playing, this is the goal. Is if the it's goal. if it's five people playing, this, this is, is the goal. goal. I agree. And and how do you say they save people? How they invest in they whatever the is bankrupting us. I guess invest. You try to invest in them and try to save them from going bankruptcy yeah. and getting them seven streams of mm -hmm. income. Because the whole goal is to help each other and stay within a network. Here, go grab the money from that room. 
knowledge. Come down. I'm trying to keep everything together so we don't separate them. We got to count out 200,000, so it's easier if you keep the 20s with the 20s and the 100s with the 100s, 50s with the 50s. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to separate each. Alright. Let me check this side. Make sure it's all 50s. That's all. I already went in that one. That's all 50s. That's going to go in the bag. Doing knowledge. All right, all hundred. Oh, got some twenties in there. Oh, a lot of twenties in there. I make I make sure there's no twenties in this. But yeah, bro, one of one of the most disappointing parts, I think, in the whole equation of things. Uh, it's not as disappointing as it was before because I've, I've, I've learned to deal with it But a lot of our people are dealing with a level of self-hate that they haven't even recognized that they're dealing with So basically a lot of us are frontlining and fighting for a demographic of people And we're wondering what the love is or what the reciprocation is or what the value is But they don't love self if one doesn't love self You can't expect them to love you or understand the value of what you bring And I say that to say this bro like a lot of people they, they see the glitz and the fun part But they don't see what goes in on the back end People don't understand, you know, like the, the, the death threats, the things of that nature, the, the adversity we run into in airports when traveling. Uh, they don't understand the ramifications of having to hire an entire security team for your children and your family. Like, you know, uh, some people know, some people don't, but I retired my mother this year. She full time takes care of my children. But people don't understand, like, the, the, the mental gymnastics that come with covering ADZ and making sure your family is 100% covered and protected. Because you're sharing information with a demographic of people whom you don't have to, whom you owe nothing, who you are not responsible for. And I think that's where the lack of value part come in. Like, example I give people all the time is a lot of their favorite entertainers, they athletes and they rappers, they actors, whatever. Uh, they know the same information I know or even more. It's just they love their false sense of security and they love that, 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 that freeness that they have with their families, that they'll never share the cheat codes, they'll never share the secrets to wealth, they'll never teach anybody the things that they know that they're not supposed to teach them. Uh, people like myself, we actually go out on a limb, you know, against our lives, and we understand the type of machine we up against. We understand, you know, how certain entities play games. Like, we, we go over in our history books. We've seen the outcome of every ethnic leader that has some real solutions that he was implementing and getting the demographic of people to change. We seen the outcome. We ain't got to say it. We already know how it go. So the point that I think a lot of people miss is they kind of have this uh, this sense of entitlement or they devalue it. It's, it's never a gray area. It's either they have a strong sense of entitlement or they devalue the shit you bring into the world. And like one of the biggest things I always remember in that, in that aspect is something like my teacher used to always hit me with. They used to say shit like, Mr. Grace, I have my diploma. You trying to get yours. So when it comes to the people, a lot of times, uh, it's unfortunate, man, but that's the way I feel a lot of times because you literally can give them everything. You, you, you can give them the keys to liberating themselves, their children, entrepreneurship, happiness, self-love, self-knowledge, and a motherfucker will devalue you. A motherfucker will treat you as if you owe them. Meanwhile, they'll turn around and support a motherfucker that brings nothing of value to their lives. So, And again, outside of the value part, people just don't know that Everyone that's around me that travel with me has to have a, 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 a permit to carry. Everyone around me has to have some form of tactical training. Because we don't know what way, which way something may come. But we know, again, history shows that it does come and it will come. So, um, more times than not, man, like, one of the things I learned is that humans tend to not value things so they no longer have them. And a lot of times I feel like that's, that will be 
the case for the masses. They won't value this body of work, this information, this consistency, and these actual solutions until they're no longer present. And, you know, a lot of us are back in the same fucked up state that we've been in. So, uh, it's not the whole family member. It's a couple of my babies, actually. I got a new one I just grabbed. Uh, this is my new baby. My new everyday carry. Nice and slim. Uh, 9mm Smith & Wesson. Um, I, like, literally just got this. Only had her 24 hours, but... Uh, as far as the collection, man, it's 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 a number of things, a n number of precautions I use to make sure the family's safe. This this one of my favorite babies, 50 caliber Desert Eagle. Uh, we got the 45 Mac 11 over there. We got the Rhino 357. She is a monster. I'm I'm gonna be real with you. I don't even like shooting her. Like your hand ate for about a week. I'm a Glock man though. Uh, don't have them all here. Got a couple of them though. Glock 42, 380, Glock 30, 45. Got a judge back there. This this is not my gun. It's actually Derrick's gun. Um, damn, I am missing a couple handguns. I know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's another story. But um, these some of my big babies. One of my favorites. Um, uh, Mossberg 500, pistol grip, of course. You got the AR back there. You got the Uzi back there in the cut. A couple AKs on that side. Another one of my favorites. This is one of my childhood favorites. I always wanted Tommy gun. I had the toy version for Halloween back in the day. When I became a big boy, I had to go get the real thing. But uh, that's another thing, bro. I, I, I get comments like on the time, like, well, why do you have guns? Or, you know, that's excessive X, Y, Z. But I think a lot of people don't really understand how much we put on the line. Uh, we're actually giving people some information that they're not supposed to have. Like, if you look at the box of the board game, it says the information we are intentionally never given. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, and it's for the people that's under a rock. If you haven't figured it out, right? A lot of the information that I'm sharing with you uh, goes directly against the central banking system. Uh, we're interrupting the system that was put in place many, many moons ago, and that's had, that has kept us oppressed while other people got crazy rich over the years. So, you know, common sense may say, uh, if I have a trillion dollar business, right, and I got this loud mouth little motherfucker who feels the need to educate people on my trillion, gazillion dollar business and tell them how they can either create their own so they could do away with mine. You know, I may get pissed off one day and I may want to do something about that. And, you know, I, I try to break this down to people so they understand, right? If I had a thousand followers, it'd be nothing. But the fact that I have collectively between Facebook and IG around 600,000, I actually influence the influencers. So, like, the big dogs who a lot of you guys may look up to, and I'm not saying it's to flex, I'm just being honest. A lot of the people that influence the masses, I actually influence them. And I'm not saying it from the from the standpoint of being braggadocious. I'm telling you why it's dangerous. Um, see, what happens when I create a chain reaction amongst the people who typically create chain reactions but give you bullshit information? Uh, that is a dangerous, dangerous place to be in. And, you know, I you know I, I take it with a smile. I'm not tripping at all. We, you know, we, uh, yeah, I don't even got to get into that. Y'all know how I feel about that. It's nothing. But anyway, um, I just want to touch on that real quick, man. I, I, I think a lot of people devalue the information that's given. And they devalue the the tenacity it takes to do so. Because I'm telling you, your favorite rappers, uh, your favorite entertainers, your favorite athletes, they know the game. They're just not willing to give it because it's easier just to collect the check um, at your detriment. It's easier just to tell you how they fuck bad bitches. They got big bags, show you their jewels, and keep it moving. They could give you the game, but then that would jeopardize their they livelihood and how they eat and their families, and they're not willing to do that. They're going to sacrifice your ass before they sacrifice theirs. Be mindful of that. Man, you, you know the things I'm into, man. I like, I I love peace, but I do love the preparation of warfare. That's why I like being around the nation. Because you see, but see this, and look, I love that blueprint Farrakhan got, right? But I'm going to add a twist to it. I'm going to get young, disciplined niggas who strong in their beliefs you know on a, on a similar type of time we definitely will be armed we will be openly armed and we will be a lot more vocal about the repercussions that's gonna come with any resistance but that's why i think like our culture fucked up because we have no collective identity like gang members ain't even i mean i ain't gonna, say, I ain't gonna generalize them but gang members haven't even started a coalition to make sure niggas know uh we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't do X, Y, Z, or we shouldn't tolerate X, Y, Z, so, no, nah, man, that shit, 
I'm, I'm gonna be real, man. Just to me, that the, the boat and shit. A lot of times, it's just like it's it's a trendy like it's like a trendy entertaining show. See, but but here's I can I I I get I get your I get your standpoint mm -hmm. on on the voting piece, mm -hmm. but the piece that 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 really needs to be home then is is that we got to understand the power of getting together and using the vote to make it work for us. Right, no, nah. so you I, know, no, no, no. That's the missing piece. No, 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 I agree with you 100% on that part. Cause you know, I say it all the time. I, I want more street niggas to be lawyers, to be judges, to be advocates for, for government. You know, I'm with that 100%. But I can also say the, the graduating class we've been voting in since I've been alive, ain't none of them niggas on that type of time. I agree with so that. So, and, and you know, to be real, we need a black Trump. Until we get one of them, then niggas gotta stop voting. Stop wasting your motherfucking time. This nigga ain't got your best interest. When he come through your hood, he gonna come with Secret Service. They gonna, he gonna mob through on some private shit. He gonna hug, kiss babies, and get the fuck out of there. Nah, I want a nigga on the podium that's on that Trump time that's gonna be like, yeah, 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 I hear you, but shit, y'all motherfuckers kill one more person in goddamn Florida without a gun, and you watch what happened, and leave that shit at that. A lot of people envy that or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So you have crowds in the pot say, I want to be in his position or whatever that don't want to but no, but like, with every niggas. movement, you gonna have to filter certain niggas out. Right. There's nothing like you oh, could, cool. yeah, you could right. envy, but if yeah. you about your issue, yeah. you get your head not up. Most people that's envy is not. They just hate quietly. The real issue is that I run, I've seen like I go sit in the city council meeting, city council. Then I have niggas that message me and be like, "What you doing that for?" They don't really understand politics, and so that, that if you if you could infiltrate the man at the top of the pyramid. And I didn't infiltrate in a negative way, but put it like this. I tell people, you know, I'm like, you know. don't. Yeah, I know, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Like, I tell people all the time, don't condemn your partner for wanting to be a judge, to be the police. Okay. Okay. Those type of relationships are a necessity. I, I know from firsthand. But I'm saying, with the city, though, <clears throat> our city's so economically behind. I don't know. I, I ain't gonna. I'm not worried about them, but I really be concerned sometimes. Like these niggas gonna be in year 2019, 2040, because LA, not on the same type of time. Though. Those niggas is a hundred years ahead. Like every time I'm with an LA nigga in LA, he putting me on some shit. I'm like, damn, really? Like y'all niggas ain't doing that in Florida? No, we don't know that. Like, bro, the West is my years ahead. So, so this niggas is, want money, they don't want to learn economics. That's the real issue. Right. So just imagine y'all, y'all have Derek. Derek don't even have to be seen. Let's, let's just say that y'all point. Derek the point man, right? Derek can go. I'm, and this, I'm going to tell you, this This is a fact. Like the so-called people in the community is supposed to be the leaders who's, who's speaking for the black people. The politicians is paying them to get our women or people who can vote to vote for the politician they with. And they getting paid 25 G's. 50 G's, 100 G's, that's the way it's working. Nah, bro, I know someone who really don't give a fuck about us, but for the check, they come stand at our neighborhood and y'all get out there and vote now. Make sure. And they hit you with a whole 20 piece. But that's what needs to happen. Once once the streets come together and knock all of them out, y'all pay. Y'all be a millionaire. Y'all be a millionaire in less than a year. And then everybody would have to come to that point person. They would have to come, and then that's where that's that's where that, that's where the tribes sit down and say, but "This is what we want." That's what I mean when I say there's no collective identity. Because if we have five thousand people in the city, be like, "We don't want a code. We got a code. Mm -hmm. and we stick to the codes." Niggas will be forced to deal with us because you don't need oh, yeah. five thousand people dog. to win. Yeah, you got yep. to get out of Black dog. You got to come sit at our table and beg us to be like, "Hey, y'all right. help." But it, as long as we scatter brain and shit. Niggas gonna, gonna keep happen. getting gentrified. You got niggas that live in the West that's gonna be displaced way out in Wyoming somewhere and can't even afford Correct. that shit. Because they want this. They want this and they'll do anything. They, they, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a known fact or whatever. You know, they shy away from this because it's a bad image or whatever. But when they see the, the profit and the value in it. I wanna personally thank everybody that supported the in home banking board game, the courses, the curriculums, whatever you did. As you can see throughout this documentary, you're serving a way larger purpose other than educating just yourself. Uh, a 
lot of that a lot of that energy a lot of those resources are strictly going into the upbuilding and the uprooting and the empowering of our culture uh, first and foremost though before I end this documentary I want to per, uh, personally uh, I want to thank David Banner I want to thank T.I. and I want to thank Juice of the Flatbush Zombies uh, those three individuals have been very instrumental and in, and in, in just my 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 psyche period as I was working and grinding to build this school to build to these apartment complexes from A to Z um, we had quite a few people in this process that you know did advise us they were going to lend a hand and whatnot and they didn't and I'm, I'm, I'm not using the, the, the conclusion of this documentary to harp on that I want to focus on the three individuals that I just mentioned so uh, I want to thank you all extremely and I know no business of none of that has taken place I don't want you to be confused I just want you to know those phone calls those, those messages and those follow-ups meant everything to me a lot of times you guys contacted me throughout this process you didn't know what I had going on but I was on the verge of giving up I was on the verge of saying fuck worrying about everybody else I'm gonna just worry about myself I was on the verge of a lot of things in the process of this board game this academy and everything and you guys uh, Again, whether you know it or not, you guys played a very vital role in my in my mental period, just feeling encouraged and feeling like I'm really gonna get this shit done. Uh, one more thing I wanna touch on. Uh, I just wanna make this point. Now, we showed you guys within this documentary how I end home bank in real life, in real time, not just a board game and concept. Now, through me end home banking in real life with the strangers and the people that decided to invest with me, I was able to retire my mother, I was able to create a budget that I pay my father although he's retired pay him monthly to make sure that he's as comfortable as can be I was able to hire a couple of my siblings I'm now able to fund an academy now for a whole demographic of people whom I don't know but they need that actual help one of the biggest things I want to bring to y'all attention is uh, my children don't attend public school and I think a lot of people overlook that in this whole process uh, I've been an entrepreneur for eight years most of you have only known me for three uh, and I say that to say this, just going back to the value and the, and, 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 and the devaluation of the people that matter the most. Uh, this academy is not for me by any means. This academy is for the, 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 the many, many people who feel left out, who feel uh, uh, isolated at school, who feel like they're getting a watered down and dumbed down education. This academy is for the streets. The apartment complex is for the streets. I don't need housing. My children don't attend public school. This is for the streets. So I just want to touch on this real quick. And it's not a question to answer right now. It's a question you, you could just let rest on your conscience for a little bit. Why is it our culture devalues the people who actually gives us tools to build with and they pedestal the motherfuckers who give us nothing? So you'll question somebody who's giving you tools of empowerment and education, you know, like um, intellectual property, the shit that, that doesn't go anywhere as long as you capture it in here. But you love and you continuously praise and you continuously blindly to blindly support, I'm sorry, uh, the motherfuckers who just feed you shit that's detrimental to not only you, but your children. Think about that for a second as a culture. And one other point I want to make, like I was saying, I had an investment group, right? Last year in 2018, roughly they invested maybe around eighty to $100,000. I took that 100000 and we times it by nine by the time the year was over. Um, as I stated, I've been able to retire relatives, employ relatives, create buildings for the streets create educational hubs like the stuff that we're bringing in real time right now so not not even really a question but my point is to my culture i'm disappointed in a lot of you and those of you who know who you are you know who you are this is not i'm gonna say this it's not to the people but to my culture and a lot of the influences in my culture and my disappointment may not mean a damn thing but i just want to share it. i'm really disappointed um i saw in real time what you could do for a collective or a generation of people with only a half a million dollars, with only a million dollars. We could be doing a lot more. We have no collective identity. And a lot of us, uh, a lot of us merely only meet with the people as a free a feeding process. We meet them, we get what we need, we get the fuck on, we take care of ourselves, we take care of our families, and then we double back and meet them again when we need to feed again. So to the people, I just want you to keep that in mind. Be, be conscious of how you devalue and how you press the people who actually bring something to your life and how you blindly support and give everybody else a pass who only come to your life when they need something from you. Uh, the selfless, one day, they, they snap out of being selfless and they start worrying about self. So I say that to say this, enjoy these times. 
um, I may not be in a position forever where I just feel like neglecting my family just to help everybody else. Be mindful of that. Um, that day may come and, you know, everybody got to figure shit out individually rather than collectively. Thank y'all for tuning in to the in-home banking documentary. More leaders. Because we have enough followers. What is intellectual property? They can take away things, but they can't take away your mind. Uh, what's the most valuable thing in life? Your time. Your time. Uh, what they did in the Olympics, the process? Uh, Black power. Black power. What is, who is, um, Angela Davis? Uh, she, she, she helped people get out of jail and rape up. Who is, what is a producer? Uh, a, uh, a seller. What is a consumer? Uh, a buyer. You're a buyer or a seller? A seller. What is a loan? Uh, they give you money and then you pay it back. What is income? Uh, the money that you get from work. What is investing? Uh, <laughs> what is investing? You know it. When you make money from your money, so if I give you a dollar, what you supposed to do is invest. Invest. Go. There's four types of money. Cash, checks, credit card, and overalls. What are you? A kid. Are you a nigger? No, I'm not a kid. Nigger. I'm a kid. What's the most powerful weapon in the world? Derek, are you a nigga? No. Are you lazy? No. Are you any of those things that society try to paint us as? No. What are you? A god. And Derek, what are you? A goddess. They can take away things, but they can't take away your mind. Uh, what's the most valuable thing in life? Your time. Your time. Uh, what they did in the Olympics, the process? Uh, black power. Black power. All right, son, what's inflation? A general increases in prices and fall in the purchasing value of money. What's disenfranchised? To the parcel on the right or privilege. If I die today, what's your job? To be Chuck my and Chloe and pick up all your left jobs and fellow. What you gonna be when you get over? A boss. Who has the power to stop you? Me. Who's coming to save you? Me. Hi, my name is Alexis. Uh, I am I Don't Mind 22 on IG. I recently took Derek Grace's in-home banking course uh, this past November, December. And when I tell you the, the information that we received, just the knowledge, the education, the speakers, the handouts, everything that we got uh, was definitely life-changing. Uh, no amount of money could have been put on that. Uh, it definitely far exceeded the $125 that we had to pay. Derek talks a lot about infiltrate, educate, vacate if you're in a nine to five job, as well as monetizing your intellectual property. So that is what I did. Uh, I've been a therapist slash social worker for the past 15 years, and I was able to create a therapeutic activity workbook for kids. Um, it's called How I Can Control My Feelings in 30 Days, and it's basically uh, there to teach you know young people how self-control um, there's various activities in a in a very fun and creative way so I just want to say thank you Derek for all that you do uh, for who you are and what you're trying to accomplish shout out to Derek Grayson in home banking this art of architect man I just want to say thanks for you know putting out the in home banking criteria and information I mean first I want to say definitely knowledge is power but what something that I did learn was knowledge applied is power. You know, going through the class, I really, I really didn't know what to expect. But because my cousin introduced me to his books, I really started getting involved into the class. Really, what Derek, Derek was about with teaching the kids. So a lot of things that he applied to his own kids, I started applying to my own. You know, I got them involved into the stock market. You know, saving money as well as investing into their own system, similar to the lemonade stand. So what, I'm, what I did was, I wound up purchasing my kids a candy machine. And now they're becoming entrepreneurs, not just in that aspect, but we actually working on building apps, doing some creative stuff together. But I wanna say, you know, Derek was one of the first people that talked about, what if the government had a shutdown? What are you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? And with him having a plan that showed me that showed me, like, look, you got to be a wolf in this game. If you're not a wolf or not expecting to be a wolf, then you kind of be in the sheep. You still sleep. I know a lot of people saying they woke, but I don't really take it as they are because 
if I'm going back and forth with somebody on social media online, and I'm not tending to my kids with the with the in-home banking, I feel like I'm, I'm I'm really not helping them out in the long run and in the future. So again, shout out to in-home banking, Derek Grace, keep doing what you're doing, man. From art to architect and my crew, man, we appreciate it, man.